Okay, this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. If you're wondering why we're dressed kind of like this, it's because the movie we're going to be talking about today is... Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, or as they say, I, MI4. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we saw the IMAX version. Oh, which, which is, everybody should go see the IMAX version. I know. Well, you know, the IMAX version came out a week before the regular version. Yeah. Which, okay, so maybe there's not an IMAX near you, but it is worth seeing an IMAX. To put it this way, you made $13 million in IMAX money the first week. I know. People are going, well, it's like $13 million. And they're like, well, it's only like they said it's third at the box office. Well, remember this. Sherlock Holmes was in how many theaters? Uh, almost 4,000. Okay. And the, and the Chipmunks were in almost 4,000. Okay. So Sherlock Holmes was first. Chipmunks was second. This was third. And I think Sherlock Holmes was what, 20 million? 20, uh, Sherlock Holmes was 39.5 oh, million. million. And 23 million was the Chipmunks. 13 million in one tenth the size of the theaters. Yeah. So if you took. Multiply it times ten. That would be 130 million. He would have. He would have had smashed records if it had been a full run. They. What it was was, they goofed. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing was. Uh, we're going to explain it. Very simply, the movies that were in IMAX theaters were not performing. So basically, they axed out those movies and had Mission Impossible come in a week early. A total week early. It's not supposed to open. That's right, because if you had seen all the ads, it said it comes out by the 21st. That's right. So if you saw the IMAX version, you got to see it early. And boy, I will tell you, it was worth going to see it. Yeah. Now, you, you hear us talking about all these different movies, and how often do you see us really, really excited about the movie? Well, yeah. well we talk about the movie and what happened, but... It Mission really had before. nothing to do with the opening, sec opening trailer for the film, which was Batman. Well, actually, that was, there are some people that came just to see the opening trailer for Batman. And then they left, which was funny. That was pretty awesome. But, uh, yeah. but, but uh, the, the trick is is that, um, okay, but when I explain it to begin with, MI4, which is Ghost Protocol, will never win Academy Awards for screenwriting or for acting. How often do pictures like that? I mean, this is an adrenaline rush, nonstop action. It's perfect for the big well, It never stops. Okay, uh, okay. The, the, basically, okay. This season, they did a homage to the old Muppet television series by doing a, a Muppet. You know, they basically took it from the TV series and made a movie. This basically had Mission Impossible's opening. Mm -hmm. You know, the lit. You know, the You know, where the little fire goes through and basically does this. You know, that was the opening. This is basically there was a reason uh, more than what you might think. There was a reason for it. What? Because the action never really slows down for two hours and 12 minutes. Yeah, and it, the running time is 133 minutes on yeah. this. And it's one of those movies where basically you're not bored because even the shots where they weren't having action, okay, we're going to try this. There was a lot of stuff put into that movie that had to do with mistakes. I mean, they were not, things did not go right, which is like in real life. Well, you know, he, the opening scene is basically. <laughs> Basically, the guy that Tom Cruise, or actually Ethan Hunt, reports to. Yeah. Actually, let's Ethan just Hunt, say there, were, there was a problem at the beginning. Yeah. So he goes to him and he's like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. Right? Uh, give me an extraction. Yeah. So during the extraction where they're talking about it and the guys basically say, We're gonna disavow you, guess what happens? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the phone didn't work. <laughs> the phone's over. Boom! It makes the phone. You know, the old end where the phone dissolves and and smoke and stuff. It walks back to it. Boom. You know, so it was a, basically it was a modern tech phone that didn't work right. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it opens up. Okay, you have to see the ending of the movie to understand the beginning of the movie. This is a movie that starts out with, what the heck is that guy doing in a Russian jail cell? Mm -hmm. And then you find out a little bit later why he was in a jail cell, which isn't the truth. Right. You have to go to the very ending but of the movie. Th yeah, you really do need to see both the beginning and the end for this. If you come in part way in this, you are totally lost. You're totally lost. It makes no sense whatsoever because, uh, okay, this is, uh, they said that, I know that most of the people all agree that you would, there is no, okay, basically the only way they could have done a lot of what they did was with a Muppet map. Yeah. <laughs> because there is no way they had, this is all taking place in a couple of days. Well, see, it, it is Mission Impossible, right? Yeah. So, Mission Impossible, well, you know, part of it is they get the assignment, and they're basically, because of all, everything that's happened, they're basically trying to clear the organization's name. And basically, it's like, you're on your own. Yeah. If you succeed, great, right? If you don't succeed, we never knew you. Okay. You're rogue. The, the, the major 
script problem in the whole bloody movie is though, you don't know how the hell it all came about. Mm -hmm. What happened? I mean, why did this thing, how was this thing allowed to happen? It was never explained in this movie. So guess what IE5 is going to do? Uh -huh, it will explain because we're going to tell you, everywhere in this movie that, that the Mission Impossible people go, the Russians are ahead of them. Waiting for They're them. waiting for them. Mm -hmm. And um, they did blow apart the Kremlin movie. Yeah, and you know, as you can guess, that's movie magic. Yeah, a lot of movie magic. Well, actually, okay. they didn't blow up part of the Kremlin. They went to Prague and blew up part of an old uh, 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 Hungarian. Because, believe me, the Kremlin would not allow them to do it. <laughs> but uh, okay. there, there is, um, okay, there's a lot of people, most people, you know, Simon Pig, for instance, or Peg, Peg. Is, is Scotty in the in Star Trek series. But he was also uh, a desk person at I, MI3, and they permitted him to feel status, and he really didn't know what the hell he's doing. Mm -hmm. And then there is Jeremy Reiner, who was playing Brent, who is a feel, who is a, uh, an, is an analytic person that basically could kick Tom Cruise's ass. Mm -hmm. That also has to be explained. So you go halfway through the picture, and they have to explain to him, what the hell are you doing out here? That's you know? right, because of course his cover that Tom Cruise knows about. Yeah, which is not great, but um, oh. the movie basically has, uh, it's got, I would say it's probably going to be up there for photography. Because when you're, there actually were 130 stories in the air in the Dubai sequence. Yeah, see, the, this is the part that amazes me. Because see, I was sitting there going, "How could they do that?" I'm like, "They're green screening." It's like, no. Mm -hmm, they did it. There's very little green screening in the thing. Plus the fact, the whole, the movie was shot with. I said the movie was partly shot with IMAX cameras. No, the movie, according to the people, oh, no, no. <laughs> we were there. <laughs> the movie weird. was all shot. I know. It, because we're, we're, we were doing the front because you know Tom Cruise. Yeah, no, they, because he's all about hoods and stuff. But um, it's uh, all shot in IMAX. The guy at the end is the thing. The movie, I love it. The movie is all shot in IMAX except where it wasn't. Well, they did explain that at the beginning before we started. Yeah, the movie is completely shot in IMAX except where it wasn't shot in IMAX. Well, you know what happens is you get so into the movie you don't even really. It's, you don't well, even. Well, what happened? It would be a change. I mean, it basically, it filled out the whole thing. But they said at times the picture would go a little bit. Uh, I know what they, I, I read some of the things that they said about some process. At times it looked like it got fuzzy. Well, that's why, because what happened was IMAX is, what happened was when you go to two, two you go to the non IMAX, which is the same film format, what happens is it, 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 they're doing here, they're going like that, so it fuzzes it out a little bit. So mm -hmm. you watch real closely, because I, I watch the technical side, I can see where the non IMAX pieces are versus the IMAX. Mm -hmm. Because it's not practical to shoot some things in IMAX that are basically, you don't need. You know, when you're looking into some areas, an IMAX shot, but you want an IMAX shot looking down 130 stories to the ground. I know, I'm still amazed. I'm just, it's like, remember that tall, it is the tallest hotel in the world, right? Tall yeah. Building. It's like in Dubai, it's 130 stories and. 138, I think. 138, yeah. And he, they're swinging from the outside, and you're going, hey, no. Yeah, and, and basically, the, they said it was the, the, the first time, they said Hollywood has now come to Bollywood because. They used the, uh, they did also, a lot of their a great percentage shooting was also done in Bollywood. This is, okay, this is an American film shot in Canada, shot um, in uh, India, shot in Dubai, Dubai and shot in uh, Prague. Also has some work done in Russia. You know, they yeah, they're, because they did the exteriors over there. But it was, I mean, yeah. they went to a lot of different. I know while she talking, I get it. They went to a lot of different places. In fact, when we were at the LA Auto Show, they were talking about when BMW decided to sponsor it. They said, Yeah, we decided to. But we didn't realize they were going to be all over the world. Uh -huh. He said, We were shipping cars all over the world. Yeah, and we saw something at the auto show. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, unfortunately, you know, you, we're not going to be able to include it here. But, and that is, we've already done it. You, if you look real closely, you might see something in that thing that you're would normally see. Because sometimes things are mission possible. Yeah, something, yeah, sometimes people are not what they're supposed to be. But if you look closely, you'll find that out. Mm -hmm. But, um, but um, no, but um, the, the Simon Pig, or Peg, I never could figure out how they call the guy. He's a Scotsman. It's Peg, P-E-G-G, -G, so Peg. Peg, Peg Simon Pig. Yes. But he is, uh, he basically like, you know, Commander Scotty. He's, uh, he's a tech wizard, but basically not a damn thing works right. Nothing. And it, it, it's part of the joke of the movie. Well, this thing got worked this time, you know. You know, they, depending upon his, they got a, they got a glove. They got a, he's climbing inside the building with a magnetic glove, oh. and the glove quits working. You know, like the Spider-Man gloves. Yeah, and it stops. Well, I know. It's working. like 
And then the bloody thing keeps coming back. Yeah, it's not working, but then it goes back in the building. Yeah, where did they come from? The I was like, and it's finally really kind of comical. Yeah, it's meant, it is meant, it is a... Uh, it's it is, comic relief? Yeah, it's comic relief. That's why the Simon guy is there. He is the comic relief because he basically is a comic actor. Almost all yeah, of his things, very funny. you know, so, but, um, uh, like I said, uh, it, it, here's the problem is we're doing this before, the, you know, the film, you don't want to stomp on a film and tell you what's going on. But we tell you that it's actually called Mission. It should be subtitled Mission Improbable. Well, you know, this is the movies. Yeah. Because I remember they're saying, you know, this is your assignment. Should you choose to accept it right from the red? red uh, well, yeah, like they have no possible. choice. <laughs> like I mean, he has no, they basically put it this way. they got four guys out there. They've been told, everybody wants to kill them, four of them. And you have no choice anymore. But you got to accept it. I mean, and, and, and you only have four and a half hours, so you have to make this happen. <laughs> it's like, yeah. And 30, and, and 30 hours all together. And I'm sitting there thinking, four and a half hours? It would take... That uh, was at the end of the movie. Four and a half. It would take a lot longer to pull. You know, this is something that would take months and months of planning. You know, like you got to figure out everything that you have and the yeah. whole schematics. It's like, you, and know, then, you have four and a half hours. Put it this way. After they they are good. All of the stuff that they did, it only ever took one thing to stop to do to stop what was going to happen. They're going to stop the nuclear war. It only took one thing to stop the nuclear war. That's all it took. It's called push the button. If, they'd have, if they could have stopped the nuclear okay, we're talking an uh, hour and ten minutes in the movie, they could have killed the movie. Oh, well, it's like, okay, it's another thing out of the Muppet movie, which is we saw. Uh, well, if we, don't, if we don't go this direction, we're not, the movie ends now. So if they could have stopped the movie, before they ever got to Dubai. <laughs> well, because part of it is they wanted this guy. Yeah. So if they intercepted it here and took it here, then this guy. But the guy was know. never important. Okay, that's what the guy had that was important. He was never important. The female hit person they had was never important. A stupid trunk was always important. The whole thing. That's all they needed. Where well, that's the that's the. Yeah, problem. but here was the part is if they took the took it then. They had no movie. Right, but also if they took it then, then he would just come back. Remember? They said, yeah, they if they took it that. then, then they would just find another way to do it. Because yeah, but you know what you do? These are, these are professional killers. What? They take it and they go, bang. He doesn't have another chance to do it, does he? Oh, yeah. They, uh, <laughs> these are all professional killers. They have no, no compulsion not to kill. And, uh, okay, okay. That, that, that but that would have been the end of the movie. That, is, uh, that would have been the end of the movie, so they had to have a reason for the movie to continue. But, um, uh, but I mean, it's, it's a it, god awful exciting movie. It really is. And this is one of those movies. You ever see movies, you're going, what do they spend all the money? Usually the big blocks, blockbuster ones, you can see it all in special effects. Yeah. This one, you can see it all in effects because I'm sitting there. But seeing. it's not computer effects. These are like, okay. What separates a Bruce Willis Die Hard movie from the other action flicks out there? It's all done old-fashioned, mm -hmm. you know, with real props and stuff. So this one, Mission Impossible and James Bond. Yeah, it's sure. I mean, uh, and for everybody who wants to know, anybody remember Josh Holloway from uh, The Real Stinker over on Lost? No, I don't remember. He's the guy that basically the little troublemaker. He plays the first, he plays the guy from Mission Impossible that starts the whole thing in operation. Oh. And it's just sort of funny is that he looks an awful lot like Tom Cruise. When they've got his hair done, like Tom Cruise used to have his hair cut, he's wearing the, uh, the black leather jacket, the hood, the whole works, the hoodie. Mm. He's like Tom Cruise. I mean, pure and simple, like Tom Cruise. The, and he, I hate to say this, I think Mr. Holloway is much shorter than what he looks like in real life because he had, his shoes were like that thick. Otherwise, not his lifts. Yeah. Oh, actually, it's women would call them heels. They, yeah, they're heels. They build the height. So, but um, the I, I'm looking at. Okay, here's Jeremy Reiner, which is uh, basically he was a child actor. I think he's in a hurt locker. He also plays Hawkeye in the Avengers. Yeah. So he's got himself a second, uh, a, a second career play. He's uh, basically he can he can match Tom Cruise action bit for action bit. 